Bruno. He doesn't stand for below me. Sounds like a lot of supernatural baloney to me. Supernatural, perhaps. Baloney, perhaps not. outside of our army of darkness have ever even heard of the snallygaster which is the crime if you ask me i understand snally it is a crime there's no reason on the pantheon of cryptid beings you should be overshadowed by bigfoot dog man loch ness monster don't even get me started i'm telling you all it is is just i can't afford the same pr people that they can they're out there hiring the best from Hinkowitz, Dorowitz, and Bemowitz, and they're out promoting, publicizing, and keeping them out in the open, but not Snally. No, no, I got to collect aluminum and cans in order to reach out and be able to afford my groceries while other cryptids are living high on the hog because of good press releases. I understand that's very, very disheartening, Snally, but the world has caught up to you, my friend, because now... There is a change taking place in 2022 when this Maryland cryptid gets its own museum. Its own museum. Snally, I am so proud of you. Well, it's about damn time. I've been flying around with me tentacles, swinging in the wind, abducting children, eating puppies. Nobody takes notice. It's ridiculous. I'm also a big fan of cryptids and cryptozoology. It's my favorite thing. And when I moved to Maryland a few years ago, I started to do all this research about the folklore. And I found out about the Snallygaster. And I was like, why isn't this more of a thing? It will be when Sarah Cooper opens the American Snallygaster Museum in Frederick, Maryland in 2021. Why does the Snallygaster deserve its own museum? Let me tell you. Can you think of any other cryptid? that was on the hunting list of a U.S. president? According to Daily Yonder, Cooper's Museum will tell the stories of the Snallygaster going all the way back into the 1730s when German immigrants settled in Friedrich and began seeing the Schnellergeist, or quick ghost, that was described as half-bird, half-reptile chimera with a metal beak, sharp teeth, red eyes, and the ability to silently swoop down and grab humans with its octopus tentacles, carrying them off to suck out their blood. Oh, pardon me, I don't suck the blood. It's disgusting. I'm simply in it to eat the brains. The brains are delicious. Maybe once in a while I'll try to fry up a little pancreas, but the blood, ugh, it tastes horrible. Imagine, if you will, warmed up jello with chunks of disgusting cranberries in it, going down your gullet. That is not a tasty treat. Let me be the first to tell you. The brains, the pancreas, oh yes, those are delicious. But no, I'm not a blood sucker. I leave that to Chupacabra. That's his gig. He's all about the suck in the blood. Not me, Pally. But then again, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Now, according to legend, painting a seven-pointed star on a barn or a house protected its contents and residents from a snallygaster. Snally, why why the seven-pointed star? Well, it's just, look at it, it's creepy. There's all these pointy things on it, and I don't know what it means. I don't think it doesn't look like a welcome sign to me. I'm not going to go in and touch stuff and do things in a place that's got one of these overly pointy stars on it. Forget you, me. Well, now, this sounds like a myth created by Native Americans to scare off white settlers. Reports of Snallygaster sightings and encounters persisted into the 1900s when the Smithsonian Institute offered a reward for a Snallygaster hide. And U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt reportedly considered postponing an African safari to personally hunt this cryptid. And long before the movies made it popular, the Snallygaster had a monster enemy, the Dueo or Dueo. A dogman-like creature said to stand six feet tall and be able to kill snallygasters. Oh, that's all hype and baloney. I will have you know there is no six-foot dog that could take on this beast of a creature that you have got your eyes upon, David Schrader. Let me tell you, 
With me tentacles alone, I could keep that dog at bay, just throwing tennis balls. So the dog man keeps running off, and he's not bright. Sometimes I ain't even got a, ten a tennis ball in me tentacle. I just pretend to throw, and that moron runs off into the woods looking for it. That seems cruel, Snelly, truthfully. I mean, just abusing the Dueo that way. It's not abuse. They're trying to nibble on my tentacles. And ain't nobody want the tentacles nibbled on. Do you, David Schrader? Do you? No, I don't. You're right. Nobody I know wants her tentacles nibbled on. Now, while the Dwayo may be more fearsome, I don't think so. All right, relax. It doesn't have a museum. Ta-da, see? See? Finally, I'm getting the recognition that I so richly deserve. Now, Cooper currently houses all of her Snallygaster info and paraphernalia in her home until she and her husband finish building the barn that will hold the museum. The collection includes art, artifacts, and pop culture pieces featuring Marilyn's own dragon. More info on tours, merchandise, and schedules is available at the Snallygaster Museum website, including details on when the next Snallygaster will be born. They're said to live for 20 years, then stay buried for 20 years before hatching again. So Cooper calculates we're due to see another Snallygaster in 2024. Will it visit the museum? I most certainly will not, unless, of course, I get the family and friends discount because I don't think I should have to pay full price to enter me own museum. Well, I'm sure they're going to let you in, Snelly. I mean, nobody, who's going to charge you to go in to your own museum. Well, people, you know how they are about money, Dave. I just can't be too certain at this point. So I will go in if I am formally invited to do such, but don't expect me to go knocking on that door looking like hell, like some desperate, clingy celebrity looking to sign autographs at a meet and greet swap. Well, that's that's cruel as as a guy who goes and signs autographs, Snally. You know, people like that. They like that that kind of content. I'm not signing no autographs. First of all, ain't nobody got a lens big enough to get my entire photograph. So what am I going to sign? Pictures of me tentacles? I don't think so. Not in the hashtag me too environment. That's fair enough. I understand completely. But a new Snallygaster in 2024? I feel like we've been such friends with you for so long that I don't want to see you go, Snally. Do you, is this, do, do you, do you die out and then the next one takes up? Oh, this is a shenanigans, Dave Schrader. Shenanigans. The Snally gas that we live as long as we want. As a matter of fact, I've got four generations under my roof in a townhouse in Egan, Minnesota. It is cramped as hell and it smells a lot like calamari, but it's, it's our place and we're happy to be there. Now, yes, there is a new one that will be born in 2024, I'm a little worried, to be honest with you, because it's kind of an inbred situation between me first cousin and my little brother, Stanley. Yeah, Stanley Gaster. That's his name. I didn't name him. Don't give me the disparaging look. All right, well, congratulations on becoming an uncle again, Snally. That's fantastic. I'm glad that you're going to have this opportunity. But now, will like all of the major Snally Gaster duties fall onto your nephew's shoulders to or, or niece's shoulders, I guess, to go out and uh, you know propagate uh, eating children and puppies and snatching people up with their tentacles? Well, of course, there is a learning curve, and I will be the one to train this little imp to come out and do all these wondrous and magical things. But if you don't pick up on it quick enough, I'm just going to continue in this reign. I'm kind of like the Queen Elizabeth of my court. I refuse to abdicate. Besides, I look amazing in a crown. Fair enough. Thank you so much, Snally. Congratulations. This is great news. I'm so excited to hear that you've got your own museum. I hope people will go check it out again. Remember, go check out the Snally Gaster Museum website. And we have a link up for that on today's program guide. And Snally, looking at the photograph here, I don't think they're doing you justice. This this photograph that they have up at the Snally Gaster, uh, American Snally Gaster Museum is worse than the creature that uh, is on the cover of the Fred Flintstone book, uh, Fred Meets the Snally Gaster. That, looks the, that was the very embarrassing part of our history. There was a little bit of 
crazy crossbreeding going on with some of our family early on. You can't hold on to me about that because that was the Cretaceous period, David. Just so you're aware, there was all kinds of weird stuff. It was like the freaky 70s for you humans. Free love and drugs and all kinds of crazy music. Next thing you know, we've got lion-headed Nelly Gasters. It's just, it's a very weird moment in history, but we don't talk about it much. Well, thank you for coming on, sharing your time with us. And again, folks, go check out Maryland's famously unknown state cryptid, the Snally Gaster. Finally has its own home, and we do have a link up for that. I'm excited. I just, I, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the years of being friends with uh, Snally and knowing how he's been overlooked to now finally realize his place in American history. He will not be forgotten. Snally, congratulations from us to you.